This is Ryan, the original outlaw of the airwaves, bringing you another episode of Hero Paranormal Podcast. Today we are revisiting and delving deeply into the coronavirus and what could be going on beneath the surface of what we are being told by the media. Today's guest is a very special guest and he may have some insight that others do not. His name is James Ring. He is from supersoldiertalk.com. He is, in fact, a super soldier and very aware of the Secret Space Program, as well as other things that are kind of hidden from the majority of America. He is easy to follow. Go to supersoldiertalk.com, and you can also go to neologicaltech.com to follow uh, him. He also has other people from the secret space program and other super soldiers on his, uh, talk show quite often. So definitely check out James ring. We are in a unique position talking to James because, well, the way I, I came across this is James had some information that, uh, seemed to me to be completely out of this world, crazy talk. And as time progressed and I watched the news and the media, these things just kept coming true in perfect unison uh, with the timeline that he said they would happen. So it's it's just kind of mind-blowing to me that there are other possibilities that the mainstream media is not telling us and that this could be more than we think it is. Um, if you haven't been to HeroParanormal.com, check it out. If you haven't been to SWR on Facebook or SpaceWolfResearch.com, check it out. We need all the help we can get at Hero Paranormal. We uh, offer patron episodes for as little as a dollar. And uh, yeah, that's all it takes to get in the mix. So best deal in town, best deal around heroparanormal.com. Check out the podcast. Also check us out on YouTube. We try to bring it to you and uh, bring it consistently, constantly. And without further ado, we're going to bring it with James Ring. James Ring, welcome to the Hero Paranormal Podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for inviting me on here, by the way. Uh, James Ring is the name I went by on the moon. It's James Ring. It's <laughs> my Really, I, yeah. Name I usually go by, but you know what? It's okay. Just call me James. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think on the last podcast it was Rink, and, and then I thought, well, maybe I had it wrong. So okay. So James Rink. Yeah. I I, I saw that, and I was going to ask you about that, but that makes sense. There's a lot of things there. You mentioned some stuff um, recently that it, it sounded so wild, and I had a hard time putting my head around it. And as I watched the media, the news sources and everything that people consider legitimate, I noticed that all this stuff started coming true, James. How, how, what do you think is going on with this coronavirus and, and everything going on around it? Okay, so I've been uh, bringing different guests on my show, uh, a little bit of background about, about me. I am a super soldier in the secret space program. Um, I don't necessarily say that necessarily me specifically, it's more like I have clone avatars and they send me off world and I have altars as well that has been sent on missions and there's con compartments. So I'm not really able or privy even to even talk about that. Even if I wanted to, they, they take, took a lot of the memories away. So, um, my background on this is my, uh, YouTube show, super soldier talk and also the web same same website, supersoldertalk.com. I've interviewed different people that were in the SSP and also as well as psychics and people who are very, in my opinion, um, gifted um, telepaths or channelers. 
so some of this information that I'm presenting to you is uh, colored from that particular background. But I also try to, a lot of people send me con um, information from insiders. Uh, just recently I heard the most latest this past week is that in the next uh, five to seven days they're, they're going to lock down um, a few major cities here in the United States. And probably by March 23rd is what we're um, seeing the whole United States will be under lockdown. But before we actually get that far into the timeline, I thought maybe maybe we should maybe start a little bit about what, what I think is going on with this coronavirus. Is that is that what you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Direction we take? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So what we know now, I'm, I didn't actually put together a cheat sheet, so... I don't have all the exact dates to me from like official government sources or whatever you would, I guess, they, the WHO or whatnot, um, the CDC. But uh, from what I'm able to gather, it appears that, um, okay, so we'll start from the beginning here. Uh, the original coronavirus appears to be made from, um, from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. There were some, uh, there's a, a bio, bio lab there that was experimenting on different strands of the coronavirus. Now, coronavirus is basically the flu, and uh, so I, I'm assuming they were working on different stra strands of uh, SARS variants, which is basically just a really bad flu. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, when the weather gets warm above 60 degrees, it kind of clears out. So what's going on here is that uh, the Chinese communist government was paying off people in that, that lab and uh, they somehow smuggled out the, the strand to the bioweapons lab in Wuhan. And uh, from there, uh, the Chinese added different variants, of uh, four variants of HIV, as well as, as uh, encephalitis, uh, which causes nerve damage. And, of course, you know, HIV, it destroys your, your, your immune system. And um, there's like a little biofilms that surround the viruses so your body is not able to recognize it and kill it off. So basically the way the virus works is you come down with the flu and that's the SARS component and then you might feel better and then you come down, you know, the respiratory issues and then your autoimmune, your immune system collapses and then go into the nerve damage and yeah, so you can technically, you could possibly recover and then get sick again. So that's why um, even the... Uh, guess they're doing was a 28 day quarantine but that's actually been reduced now to like 14 it's not enough uh, because from at least some of the channel and information that we got from Kusal um, who's on my show he says according to um, an AI from six million years in our future if you want to believe that source mm -hmm. claimed that this coronavirus has a um, let's see here uh, a dormancy period of 60 days, a latency or whatever you would call it. So, yeah, you can be you can get infected for 60 days and be a spreader all over the place, and then finally get get ill and croak croak up over and die. Not not always die, but okay. So, so what's going on here is at least what um, we discussed. I discussed a little bit about this. Now, I mean, obviously, I can't verify this information, but. There was a report, um, I think this may be back in early February or late January, of a CCP insider, which is the Chinese Communist Party. So uh, this insider basically claimed that um, the Chinese government was looking for a way to kill, uh, I'm sorry, placate the Hong Kong population. They were looking for a, a way to basically dumb them down to make them mentally retarded and to um, basically uh, pacify them, because obviously the Chinese government cannot tolerate dis um, dissidents, and uh, Hong Kong is population have grown up under the ideas of um, free thinking, free thought, and so yeah, that is not compatible to the communist <laughs> hive mind system. So. Uh, so the goal was to release this virus, dumb down the population, and then maybe just go in there and take it over or just be smooth sailing. That's their thought. So they, they uh, in this uh, weapons lab, they took some political prisoners and um, experimented on this um, 
this coronavirus with the all the uh, variant strands. By the way, the coronavirus is, apparently has been patented by the uh, um, the Bill Gate Bill Melinda Gates Foundation on <laughs> the patent on the original coronavirus that was you know uh, before the, the Chinese messed with it. Wow. So um, they uh, they gave us um, one of these people um, these the testers. Uh, the virus, and they found out that it, initially the results were positive for what they wanted. It worked. It made it dumbed down the, the people, and um, as a result, uh, they they uh, thought everything was great until four days later uh, they started bleeding out of all their orifices and died in a horrible, painful death. So uh, it was basically deemed that it was too deadly to ever be used, and. Um, so what happened is one of the uh, lower-level staffers at this weapons lab in, uh, near Wuhan, or might have been in Wuhan, um, I'm not actually looking at my notes right now to where, see where it was, uh, basically um, got greedy and uh, smuggled one of the, um, the vials out. And according to this whistleblower, this, the CCP whistleblower, said that the, there was he was going to sell it off to the CIA. Now, um, people that I work with, kind of remote viewed it or looked into it some and said it wasn't really the CIA, it was Mossad. Uh, they think uh, that the Israelis were, were trying to get it. Maybe they, were, maybe they were working CIA and Mossad, I don't know, but it, apparently the Israelis were the ones trying to get a hold of that because <laughs> I suppose they wanted to use it on the Palestinians. Um, but the thing is, um, the Chinese found out about the uh, drop-off, which was supposed to be in that meat market in early December in Wuhan, and uh, they managed to kill a few of the people that were involved, and the vial broke, and, uh, yeah, the virus started to spread. So, um, anyway, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pause there and allow you to comment, or, or if you want me to, I can continue. Yeah, so it's, it, it's obviously this, this has, it's been designed, or at least it appears that it's been designed for maximum, you know, it, it, the exposure rate and the way it can transfer it seems it seems really scary the way that it may be possibly a bio warfare weapon yeah so i think that um i've heard different rh rates on the was it the row rates uh were basically for every every um everybody that gets infected how many other people you infect and it's some say it's close to four i've seen as high as 15 which is um Extremely, it's way higher than the, the original SARS, um, and it's I think it's double what Spanish flu was. And you know, Spanish flu killed what I think about 500 million. So if we're not mistaken, it could kill close to at least double that, if not more. But um, okay, so um, I guess I can just go ahead and continue on here in the timeline. Yeah, I did have one one, on one super quick question, James. Sure, the, um, go ahead. Um, Bill Gates, I think he was rumored to have said that he expected uh, it was a huge number of deaths, and that's just interesting that the it, you know that there is another connection there, but like in the millions, and, and I think it might have been like ten million or a hundred million. I don't want to quote it because I don't know for sure, but I think that's an interesting connection there. But yeah, please get back to the timeline. I'm like enthralled. Yeah, well. You know, I, I really haven't explored exactly what the Bill Gates connection was on all this. Um, I just, from what I read, read that uh, apparently, uh, yeah, um, he owned the original patent. And actually, a lot of these viruses are have been patented, but this particular virus, um, I don't think that it's been patented. It's basically uh, um, because of the HIV components, the the the, the drugs that they're using in um, China, that the ones the the medications that they're using, they found the most effective are the HIV medications to kind of stabilize the immune system. But honestly, um, they couldn't even, they can't even make a vaccine. If you ever, if you hear anything in the media about a vaccine is imminent and they're working on a vaccine, it's, it's not true because um, the, uh, the original base uh, component of the virus is SARS and SARS is basically like a really bad flu. So, if you know anything about the flu or a common cold, every time it goes to another person, it mutates. So each generation, um, it mutates a little bit, it changes a little bit, and then it changes again and again. So after it affects about 20 different people, it's could mutate it a little bit 20 different times. So if you were to create a vaccine 
that's our. It, um, by the time you put it out there, it's already mutated a million times, so it, it, it's ineffective. Does that make sense? Are you following me? Oh yeah, totally, totally. Okay, yeah. So, um, if you hear anybody in the me- news media saying that they're they're most, most like a politician is saying that, or a government to um, keep the panic um, the public from panicking, but. Um, there is technologies to stop all this, but uh, the problem is the um, the pharmaceutical companies, the cabal, the elites, obviously do not want us to have it because they want they want it for themselves. But I'm not sure, even sure, if that's going to be effective because um, something else is uh, has, apparently is going on here, and that's and that's another um, part of this equation is the uh, 5G. Now, um, of course, uh, uh, Wuhan was uh, rated, I guess, uh, the first 5G connected city in the world, uh, where um, the stuff is uh, the 5G towers are all over the place. So, um, the at least what has been relayed to me is that a AI, a rogue AI, has hacked the 5G towers and has hacked the virus somehow because virus themselves are basically crystalline and um, crystals contain um, uh, information or memory. So theoretically, just like you can go into a hard drive and change the coding and programming around, you can possibly probably do the same thing with, with these crystals in the DNA. So I'm not quite sure exactly how it was done, but that's a really good question to explore how they're actually hacking this virus, but this AI is seeking out to destroy everybody that is fearful or negative, at least this is according to information that was channeled from this AI, um, this um, Unimatrix 1 AI from six and a half million years in our future. So um, I'm not necessarily saying it's true, but it seems probable because initially we got this plan that was put in place by the CCP to kill off the Hong Kong population, or if if you listen to the most recent uh, Project Camelot episode where uh, they had um, Carrie Cassidy was talking about about Mark Richards, Mark Richards claims that the Communist Party made a deal with the Draco to release this virus to kill off half its pop- half their population in exchange. I'm assuming for technology because that's usually. Because what happens is when you make a deal with the Draco, um, usually uh, world governments want technology in exchange for, and the, what the Draco want in exchange for this deal is if, let's say, 500 million people died in China, the Draco want to keep maybe about a third of that for food, and another third of that they're going to keep them as slaves, and the other third they'll probably die. So, um, so while that's going on, the Draco is harvesting these people, then the, uh, the Chinese Communist Party is enriching themselves in technology. And um, additionally, the coronavirus attacks reptilians, which the Draco are at war at. Now, this is what Mark Richard says is um, probably is what has been going on. So, while we have this agenda or multiple different agendas, we have this other, this AI that's come in and has hacked the whole process. So, whatever plans are put in place are now out the water because. Um, this other agenda of this AI has taken over. And so when the communists, because the communist government is based on a hive mind mentality where there's no allow, they don't allow any like free thinking or it's all about groupthink. So um, the, the only way they can um, calm down the population is to basically withhold information, to um, keep people ignorant, and to, of course, they got the quarantines and try to prevent populations from moving around. And all that's doing is causing the people to go into fear. So while that's going on, there's a strong probability that um, even a greater portion, I mean, this, what we were getting from this Unimatrix 1, the projection rates of was that the Chinese species is about to go extinct, as well as the Indian subcontinent, um, about 2.5 billion people are about to die, including a 70% of the United States population because of this fear com- component. Now, I possibly like to think that the timelines can change. Um, I think that uh, ultimately talking about the future changes it. Who knows? 
maybe maybe us discussing it now can create an alternate reality where maybe not so many people need to die. I don't. I I personally like to see a a, a good resolution to all this where um, the people benefit because obviously it's not fair for half a billion people to die because some Draco want to harvest them or whatever issues the Chinese have with the Hong Kong population. And by the way, the Hong Kong population should come out a lot better than the Chinese government mm-hmm. and all this. And we're also looking at um, the CCP collapsing by July because of all this. It, they're not going to last much longer. Uh, so, but anyway. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to just pause there and give you a moment to comment or... It definitely seems. <laughs> it, yeah, it definitely seems. It seems like the Chinese population. I mean, China was like a. I, I keep hearing that China's the enemy. I mean, we had all the trade wars going on and all this stuff, and China was such a world power, and now it's just clinging to just exist. So, I mean, a lot of what you're saying is actually taking place. It's 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 pretty pretty wild stuff. Well, I mean. And then and you got this other issue here with the Illuminati and the Cabal here in the West. And um, they're very concerned about the Chinese government um, or population becoming another first world power. And uh, they want to um, supposedly stop that, slow it down. So they actually have an incentive to, to see the Draco and all that stuff going on. But like I said... While they're planning all this stuff, there's another agenda with the AI coming in and taking over, and that's not being discussed in any media because nobody or governments, they don't want people to know that there are very advanced AI that can do stuff like this, um, and ETs and aliens and all this stuff. It's all real, uh, but uh, because they, they've, done, they've lied to us about for so long about um, the whole, you know, all the secrecy, that they've got a problem. They can't go out and tell people what's going on because then they'll have to admit that they lied to us. And then if they lie to us, then the whole, everything's going to open up. So, I'm sorry, about like the floodgate of all the secrecy, not just talking about ETs, we're talking about free energy, um, cancer cures, and, uh, you know, you name it, uh, all this suppressed text and um, pedophilia and all that. So, all right, so moving on here in the timeline. Uh, uh, while that's going on, um, of course, China puts everything down in lockdown, and uh, flights all get for, um, stopped from going into China, at least in the U.S. and so on. And now, um, going on what's going on in Italy, they put that that uh, that country down in lockdown. And um, I've heard recently they start shutting down schools in Europe and um, the Czech Republic is what I heard. Uh, so. Yeah, things are just, it's starting, although Northern Europe and the UK and so on, uh, they haven't done a lot of quarantines there, but uh, there's been uh, the upper echelon of, and the UK government has told doctors to stock up for at least 60 days of food because once quarantine takes place, everybody's going to panic and basically uh, do a clearing out, clear out the grocery stores of food and so on. So they're telling um Basically, now's the time to go out. I'm not saying if you're a doctor, but if you're aware and you're listening to this and you want to prepare yourself, the very least you should do is get yourself a couple bags of rice and uh, some beans and frozen, uh, not frozen, um, dried goods or dried so on Mm -hmm. to keep keep yourself um, going. Uh, Toilet paper as well. Um, I'm not necessarily, necessarily saying face masks are going to do much because what we're looking at here is that the virus is actually a lot small, smaller, part particular size. So it can actually even go through even like the N95 is not even that effective. Uh, so basically face masks are best for people that are already infected <laughs> that not get, let us get sick, the ones that aren't. But um, I would say just keep your immune system up. There's a, You could do um, elderberry, get a couple, um, maybe get a, pound of dried elderberry and you can make your own without them to spend a lot of money. Um, I'm not rec- necessarily recommending MMS, but there are, apparently that sh- has been shown to be somewhat effective as well. I just don't really think drinking bleach, even though it's only going to... Um, con- re- you, you, I mean, sure, are you familiar with MMS? Very, you know what I'm talking about? very, very little. Can you explain that a oh, little bit? Okay. 
Yeah, well, that was the uh, John, was it, was it Jim Hubble, I think, or, mm-hmm. yeah, um, he came up with this chlorine, um, chlorite, chloride, chlorine dioxide, or chloride dioxide, I think it is. It's basically a form of bleach that uh, stays, um, it turns into bleach for about 30 minutes, and then it turns into salt, so when you take it in your body, it, it goes in there and kills off all the bad critters for about 30 minutes, and then it just changes the salt, so you drink a lot of water, but... I really think uh, you really don't want to have, in my opinion, I, don't, I think it's not really a good thing to kind of put a lot of stuff in your body that's going to be um, cause a lot of free radicals and stuff. I just think there's there's a better way of keeping your immune system up than that. But um, if if you have some, by all means, give it a shot. You know, it's better than that than getting sick. So anyway, but the point is, is that... Um, don't go into fear because there's another agenda going on here, and that is the mass arrests. So while we have this coronavirus spreading like crazy and an AI that's taking it over and killing off people who are negative and are fear, we have the white knights in our military who have been putting together a plan for the last 20, 30 years, if not longer, it's really began around 1980, um, to bring about these prosperity programs to the public and heritage funds, which belong to humanity. And these funds are in the quintillions, if not more. I've heard, I mean, I've heard quadrillion, um, quattro, de, quattro decian, which is like, I think it's 45 zeros, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. It is a lot of money that's out there, and this money belongs to humanity. The cabal has been using it for their secret space program as well as their underground bases. And um, we have been kept nothing as but nothing but slates. There are technologies like rep- replicators, just like you see in Star Trek, where you can um, quantum 3D print. It's actually form they use a form of dark energy. It's it's a little bit better than than um, 3D printing. But, uh, yeah, you can print whatever you want, food, clothing, um, furniture, homes. Yeah, so there's no need for money. There's technology to re-age you to whatever age you want to be at um, or and get rid of any kind of disease or um, anything that's bothering you, even like uh, genetic disorders. We can re- reformat the uh, DNA. There's technologies to do that. It's a lot harder, but they can do it. Um there's technologies, of course, for uh, looking into the timelines, time travel, so we don't have to worry about anybody dying from disasters anymore. We can just go back and change the timeline. Everybody be fine. There's time. Uh, there's technologies for teleportation. Of course, the the, the uh, integrated technologies to um, you know for levitation. And uh, so, yeah, this is uh, this is the world that uh, Tesla wanted for us, and we're about to go into it. But we can't do it because the cabal is so powerful and so pervasive in every part of society. And the brainwashing is just so extreme on so many people have no clue what's going on. But I'm hoping that this will, maybe, I I really think their eyes are going to start waking up because, or opening up, because uh, once they see these mass arrests, well, they're probably not going to see it until way after it happens because we're, apparently, the timeline we're looking at here is, Around March 16th, local events should be um, be canceled because of coronavirus. Around March 23rd, the U.S. will go into coronavirus quarantine for three weeks, shortly after martial law will be declared. The coronavirus is a White House op and not a real threat, apparently, is what this source says. And then it says here, March 30th, the U.S. will return to gold standard. April 12th, first arrest publicly um, I'm sorry, first arrest predicted by Q, Barack Hussein, Obama. This will start to awaken the mass public. Social media will be significantly disrupted. Afterward, waterfall of arrests will occur. I'm sure Nancy Pelosi would be part of that and uh, Hil- Hillary Rodham Clinton. So, and then um, I'm not sure if we're going to go to like a Nassara timeline or maybe they got some other plan, but um, I really do feel like the heritage funds will will finally be released. And then they're saying by July, full ET disclosure will occur, will occur. So that seems like a really good positive timeline for me. Um, I don't know how many deaths, how many people are going to die in the process. But, um, yeah, so 
as far as, um, you know, if you're listening to this, just um, stay positive and uh, just, uh, you know, keep looking for the signs. I mean, we're already seeing that right now with um, the uh, the lockdown here in the U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, not lockdown. Uh, they stopped the flights just recently. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure you've heard about that. And also they... Um, Trump wants to put a block on uh, payroll collections um, for uh, the rest of the year. So I really don't think we're ever going to see it come back. Now, he said only on businesses affected by coronavirus, but, you know, <laughs> once everybody goes into <laughs> lockdown, that should be all of us if you're in the U.S. So I really think it's going to be doing – we're going to see the end of the IRS pretty soon and as well, uh, and I don't think it's ever going to come back because under NASARA, we're supposed to go to a flat – flat tax of, um, I think they said 12 to 15%. But you know what? There's so much money out there. We don't even need to have tax taxation. I, I You know, once you have your replicator, you really could care less. You can just print the money <laughs> mail to them. Right. Seriously. M- money's going away pretty soon. Okay, so um, any other questions you got? Yeah, you're. I, I think it's really interesting about the um, AI that you mentioned because it – just yes, last night I was watching uh, CNBC, and one of their one of my favorite commentators, Tom Lee, came on, and he was talking about exactly what you're saying that this AI. They were asking like, why is the market so you know getting just gutted? And he mentioned that this AI is literally taking into consideration things like social media, what's trending, what people's feelings are, what their thoughts are on coronavirus. And this is on CNBC. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of reality to that. Yeah, uh, I don't think the stock market is ever going to come back. So if you're in it, um, you pro- I mean, uh, if you were asked, well, okay, so maybe if you were to buy some stock in companies such that sells hand sanitizers and <laughs> air masks like 3M, you might actually make a little bit of money. But um, I really feel like um, w- once we go into this new system, stocks and corporations and all that stuff is really going away. Um, I mean, there still, still will be a transition period of a few years before you know everybody has this tech in their house. But... Um, the economy, once once the U.S. goes under quarantine, the economy as we know it is going to be coming to an end, and it's not going to be re- rebooted un- with a, un- unless they bring out the new techs because uh, um, we are living in a slave grid, and the Trump administration knows this, and despite the fact that a lot of people call, say orange man bad and think that he is a uh, part of cabal and this and that, and he abuses women, you know, the point is... Um, there is an art of the deal, and I'm not saying that I, I'm, I necessarily agree with his women, womanizing days, but I do n- believe that he is part of the, at least what I was told is that he is one of these, um, he is a starseed um, walk-in, I think walk-in is what I heard, because I heard different sources, um, but he's from, basically his soul energy comes from the Sirius system. He's not one of these reptilian shapeshifters that like to drink blood, like Al Gore and some of these other people. Um, a lot of people shifty shift, a bunch <laughs> of reptilians. Uh, so, um, and by the way, not all reptilians are bad, but um, the ones that, you know that are pedophiles and drinking adrenochrome and all that stuff, they're the, the, yeah. We can't let them. We can't have them ruling us anymore, like like they've been doing. The royalty, thinking that they're that they, well, it's not that they think. I guess they got away with it. They made deals. The royalty made deals with the Rothschilds, and the Rothschilds. Were responsible for collecting the money, and you know the whole system was all all basically with the you know the the eye of the pyramid was supposed to control the rest of us. But the problem is now that we're going to this new age of where where um, all this new technology is be brought out, we're all going to be in the eye of the pyramid. We're all going to be I'm going to say gods, but well, certainly you know if you have technology that could be considered godlike, then you, it would certainly allow us to become to our fullest highest potential. So uh, yeah, um, but as far as the AI is concerned, I'm I'm not necessarily going to dw- worry too much about that. There are, there are numerous AIs on this planet. They all have got their own agendas. Most of them are negative. Um, some are positive. There's certain certainly there's a positive timeline 
Um, there are AIs in our future that are sent people back in time to alter the timeline. So there's a lot of temporal activity going on here as well through Montauk and through what was going on through the Third Reich. They had their own time travel programs, and everybody's got their own different agendas. But ultimately, I think uh, Mother Earth and the uh, positive ascension timeline is going to win out where humanity is free from their slave grid. And despite whatever, you know, I mean, even even when they had the looking glass technology, if you um, looked into Dan Burish and uh, mm -hmm. the um, when they were looking into the, this is I guess this was right before. I'm not sure what year it was maybe a 2010 or prior to that they were looking using looking glass to look into the future past 2012 to see what was going to happen and they every time they would look in the future it was always a positive ascension timeline it mattered it didn't matter whatever they did it was always positive at the end and then around 2012 the technology stopped working so uh, I think that's where we are right now it, it doesn't matter what anyone does it's always going to have a positive result. So that's why I'm not going to live in fear or anything. But, you know, if, unfortunately, um, some people may die. So if you have somebody, a loved one who is past the age of 70, because that's usually who's affected most, just, uh, you know, look out for them. Get, get Like I said, get some elderberries, some, you know, even like a high dose of vitamin C, mega dose has been shown to be somewhat effective as well. They were showing some results of the intravenous, but I'm not saying, you know, do intravenous vitamin C, but, you know, if you do get sick, it could be uh, something to consider. That is so, anyway. that's so interesting that, um, it, it does seem it really, in my opinion, it does seem that, you know, there's a lot of things that were coming, uh, the coincidences, you know, space force, this Chinese trade war, and then we have, um, it, it seems like there is, I mean, the lockdown of Europe now, I heard there's tanks in the streets of Italy and it is just brutal. It, it does seem like there is some kind of uh, underlying way that this is just traveling with a speed that we've never seen before. Yeah, this is not, this is nothing normal. Some, some people say, oh, this is just a common flu. It's cold. It'll go away when the weather gets warm. Um, I think maybe the SARS component may may clear up some, but it's it's already airborne. It's going to be and you know it's on the in the toilet paper. Apparently now it's in the toilet paper. <laughs> it's it's everywhere. So um, once the weather starts getting cold again in the fall, you know, unless they release the suppressed technologies to eliminate it, they can use some kind of nano dust. Uh, there's probably there's probably ways that we could zap the planet. Um, certain frequencies, even. Um, was it, I think it was a Royal, Royal Rife. He was working on the Rife frequencies back in the 1930s. And um, he found that um, you could uh, use certain frequencies to vibrate crystals, just like uh, glass. You know, an opera singer can, some of them anyway, can, can break glass at a certain frequency, it can vibrate it. Um, the viruses are also crystalline, so certain frequencies you can vibrate it as well. And then, you could also project these frequencies over cities or large areas or even maybe over the whole planet and eliminate the whole thing. Um, and you can do this for any kind of disease, cancer or whatnot. We can, we can eliminate cancer over, over, overnight on this planet, but they don't want to do it because the pharmaceutical companies make so much money. Um, so unfortunately, they, I guess they, they uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they killed rice, I'm, I'm, but uh, they did suppress his research. And uh, destroyed a lot of his um, his special microscopes that he had that could see the viruses. And by the way, the right frequency, uh, the right uh, because of the um, was it the Schumann resonance, and as the planet goes through the galactic core, it, because our solar system is constantly moving around the, the galaxy, the frequencies are all changing. So if you went back to the frequencies that Rife used back in the 1930s, they do not work today. That's why. If you were to purchase a Rife machine and you just start running all these frequencies, it's like you're not really finding it very effective. It's, that's the reason why, by the way. So you have to. We 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 need to go get a whole new set of these frequencies. Maybe the uh, secret space force and um, I'm sorry, space force or the secret space program, the Trump administration can get a hold of some of these frequencies and start projecting them. But uh, I don't know. 
I really I'm not quite sure exactly how how they're going to resolve the end of the virus, but I really do feel like uh, we will see the mass arrests and the, and the money and all that stuff. And the end result of all this is going to be extremely positive for all of us, even though it looks scary now. For sure. And when people like question the whole uh, Nikola Tesla and, you know, these, these amazing technologies and even time travel for that matter, it's an interesting coincidence that Trump's uncle, if I'm not mistaken, gathered all that information. Yeah, well, I mean, um, his uncle, he worked for the, uh, I think, what was it, the FBI, and so he had access to Tesla's uh, secret um, um, research after he died. So I'm pretty sure the uncle would have told, you know, Donald what's going on here at some point. I mean, of course, maybe, maybe, I don't think he necessarily would have been totally under NDA, but... uh, Certainly, the the FBI's got a hold of access to all this, and uh, you know it's quite it's really quite a shame what happened to Tesla because they're they're in the alternate parallel reality where um, Hitler won World War II. They actually after they invaded Washington D.C. they uh, they um, set up an unlimited budget for Nikola Tesla, and uh, and that. In that particular reality right now, it, it's basically everybody's living in mansions, and um, there is, uh, there are some drawbacks too under the Nazi regime. But <laughs> I, I don't. I could go into that if you want, but or we could stay focused on this. But I'm, what I'm saying is that there are realities where you know, they released the reaging tech, and te- Nikola Tesla is still alive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we if we could open up portals and doorways, we could technically go over there and, and talk to Tesla. Anyway, someday. Yeah. The, In the this, meantime, um, did you have any other questions you wanted to go over? Yeah, you know the um, the, the whole. It, it seems odd that um, you know everybody was attacking Trump, and there's been a lot that's fallen on his plate. This is probably one of the worst things that's fallen on any president's plate, and he seems to be handling it in a way that he's not. It seems like he knows what's going on. I mean, just from look the looks of it yeah i really i really wonder if he if he even is aware of this ai component i mean i know the trump administration is has been debriefed on the ets from at least other uh, whistleblowers that have talked to me they say they they've seen him in space he was debriefed he was taken aboard in the secret space program and uh some other whistleblowers um not as well experiencers saw him up there, but um, whether or not he still doesn't recall that, I don't know, but I really feel like uh, Space Force and all, um, whatever plans they have, they are super eager to get these technologies out, and they need the system to die as is, and um, you can't uh, do this by just, you know, some people say, well, why can't we just uh, go ahead and do mass arrests? Well, there's a collateral damage component because um, they could go in there and start blowing up buildings. They could blow up cities. They could um, launch nuclear weapons. They could do so many bad things that uh, it has to be done in a very controlled way. And um, maybe uh, by putting all, all um, the U.S., maybe even the world, under quarantine, keep us locked in our homes, they're less likely to, to kill us all. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping maybe that's what it is, but uh, yeah. So I really feel like Trump he knows what's going on, and um, I think uh, everything's going to work out as planned. Maybe not in the timeline that I just mentioned earlier. You know, the quarantine and all that March 23rd, and uh, the gold standard. It could be you know everything's in flux, but uh, yeah. So. Yeah. From a um, an interesting uh, from from a from an outside perspective, this this is interesting because I think that you know if if the government, which is I mean their job is to govern the people, if they were aware of something like this, it would be irresponsible to just come right out and say it because people would freak out. I mean, look at how bad people are freaking out already. You know, and I I went into a Costco the other day and I turned right around and went right back out. It's like, 
I get it. I get why people in government would try to keep some of these things at least undercover. Yeah. So, uh, right now, um, I guess that I, I've heard the most latest news that I have is that, um, there are operations going on in Europe right now under NATO, uh, where they're trying to arrest, uh, the mayors of major, uh, European cities, the American forces are going in there arresting these uh, blood drinkers and pedophiles. So, um, I mean, obviously, maybe that's what's really going on in Italy that we're not being, what we're not hearing about. I'm hoping that's what it is, but um, yes, yeah, so certainly uh, the, the news media is not going to let us know that a bunch of really bad people have been arrested, especially if they're in control of these news organizations and uh, they're, they're the mouthpiece. They control the mouthpieces of information on this planet, when they, which they've done for, for a long time with all their, their money that they created out of nothing mm-hmm. by purchasing all the newspapers and media. But, uh, yeah. And it's interesting that Italy is getting hit so hard. And we're talking about, I mean, that's basically the home of the Vatican. Is the Vatican going to even exist after this is something I've, I've been asked by some listeners. And I, I don't know what to tell people. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a rumor that the Pope has Corona, but I don't, you know, it's also a rumor he just has the flu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough what he really has. Uh, but yeah, there's something really going on, um, bad in Italy, uh, for them to do this. I mean, that is, of course, where the, you know, the headquarters, a lot of the cabal is. So, uh, it's, it's good to see that under lockdown. But, um, like I said, I, I, I couldn't really say when the actual timeline is going to happen here. Um, I've also, of course, recently in the news, um, Tom Hanks came out with having the Corona, um, virus and his wife. So uh, if you know anything about um, Isaac Cappy, mm-hmm. who accused Tom Hanks of being a pedophile, and um, and he was, and he also, I don't know if it was Cappy or if it was someone else, but uh, there's there's some pedophiles in Hollywood that um, a they can just abuse children, and then there's some that kill babies and eat them, and uh, yes, yeah, some even which would go in the, the really the work nastier part of it all, and I I think. I think Hanks is probably in, in probably closer to that group. Although, you know, I don't know personally, I've never met the guy. Um, but he, to me, he looks like he drips evil. And, um, so if him coming down coronavirus, either a, that could be what I just told you earlier with the AI targeting people who are negative or B, maybe that's his cover. Just like, uh, what was it? The uh, no name McCain supposedly, uh, when he was, uh, um, oft, because mm-hmm. uh, you know, apparently he was taken to Gitmo or whatnot, given the uh, the bullet option, because he was so dirty. I don't know if you've looked into that, but he he was he was basically the the Republican Party version of Hillary Clinton, and they and they both worked together. You know, the McCain Foundation and the Clinton Foundation. They were all they were all in it all together, and the child trafficking, drug trafficking. We're talking heroin, all that. So um, McCain's gone. Space Force is in. Next step is to get um, arrest Brock and then um, Hillary Clinton and then, yeah, get the Express Technologies out. Unbelievable. And, yeah, for those that aren't familiar with Isaac Cappy, it's definitely something to check out. I think it's uh, Brackets and Jackets is his video is one that I that blew me away. And he was taken out. I mean, at least in, uh, he, he died under suspicious circumstances. And also in Arizona, land of McCain. But Isaac Cappy, there were a bunch of people, and Tom Hanks was one of those. I thought it was very strange, James, when when Tom Hanks came out and said that he had the coronavirus because that's exactly immediately being somewhat mi- you know, m- mindful of these things. That's where my mind went was, well, that's a coincidence, like, you know, that he would get this so quick, being from Hollywood and being accused of so many bad things. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it's probably just a cover. Um, I mean, maybe he really does have something really bad, but you know what? I'll, um, 
I mean, I don't want to cast judgment on the guy if, if he's in it. I really don't think he's in it, but whatever, whatever, um, whatever he deserves, I think the universe will give it to him soon enough, sooner than later. Um, but yeah, certainly there are a lot of, uh, what happened with Cappy. I mean, what was it like on the day that he died, Tom Hanks posted something on his Twitter page about Route 66, which is right because you're, you're, you're kidding me. I didn't know that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He, he, he committed, apparently he committed suicide on a route 66. Was it off a bridge or yeah, like you know a how, 20 foot bridge, I think. Yeah. And then he had the glove too. And I don't quite understand why he has all these gloves. It's almost kind of weird. Um, uh, what it, what kind of messages he's trying to portray. And, and the thing is, is that if you go on his Twitter page and you read the comments, like half the comments are accusing him of being a pedophile and he's not deleting any of them or saying anything, he's not responding. It's just like, how in the world can he even be in public um, mm-hmm. with all this going on? But maybe that's why he's not in public. It's <laughs> <laughs> a holiday in Australia, right? Probably a holiday in Gitmo or, or, or right, wherever he might right. be. Yeah, that was really weird. That was really weird that Tom Hanks uh, came out that, I mean, it's a mind blower for sure. And it, it's, it's, I, I could see if, if this is a unified or if it is AI, I don't know if there's some kind of operation or, um, it, it does seem like the coincidences are far outweighing, you know, the normalcy of all this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're going to see more and more, um, rest coming up in the future. I mean, we'll see, we also see Har- Harvey Weinstein. Um, yeah, that just came out. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, um, Epstein apparently is not dead. <laughs> uh, somewhere on the... But he was he was an intelligent asset. I mean, I was, I was... The information I was getting that he worked for Mossad and he was, he was gathering dirt on the cabal. So I think they probably pulled him out to... to and he's singing like a bird somewhere. Um, but I mean, he, he was still was a dirty person, but, uh, he's, you know, you usually got to make deals to keep your, whatever. Anyway, I'm not, I'm probably mm-hmm. shouldn't have gone <laughs> more about Epstein without, you know, more information, but anyway, it's an interesting case. The Epstein case is super interesting. I mean, his Island is still there. His ranch is still there. Money is still moving between accounts. Nobody knows how or why even the judges are, are, you know, in a quandary, it's almost like there's a smoke screen and nobody knows what's going on behind it. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and you know, actually he actually owned other islands too nearby and they don't really talk about that. And, uh, who knows what's going on down underneath these islands? Cause allegedly there is some, um, photographs taken from that they would, uh, the elites would go, I don't know how, how G rated this is, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep it as G rated <laughs> okay. as possible. You bet. But, uh, yeah, so there's pictures of the elites going down there and they would, they would disrobe themselves and they would eat, eat these children for the adrenochrome. And of course the blood would get everywhere. So that's why they, they disrobe themselves. And then afterward, um, yeah, so it was, uh, I guess they got all their high and their fix, but, uh, yeah, the, these people were very sick and, um, I guess Epstein him his his role was I guess was like what do you call it maybe honey pot or whatever to get a hold of footage of all these elites doing really dirty things and uh, yeah certainly Bill Gates he's he's been down to that that the pedophile island and of course the Clintons um, I forgot how many times uh, Hillary and Bill has been to that island but it's more than once and um, and Trump is uh, uh, Trump has never been there but. Uh, yeah. So anyway, interesting. Yeah. And it's one of those, I mean, I think they tried to draw everybody in of power. At least it seems like, you know, if, if this is an operation that's trying to just get dirt on people, they're going to pull anybody that has any weight and try to get dirt on everybody because that's more power for them. Right. Right. But I, I agree. I, I think there's definitely a blackmailing um, force there behind all that. So what recommendations from here on out, like um, if we do start seeing arrests and things of that nature, other than preparing ourselves 
and trying to protect our families and that, um, from the virus, James, what other recommendations do you have just like from more of a, uh, like staying grounded and, and, you know, just, uh, true to self, how, how should people respond to the craziness that's coming out of the media? Uh, well, for starters, uh, I mean, I, I was, I like to meditate. It helps, helps me, uh, keep my emotions grounded and stable, like you said, and not really go into the fear aspect. And it also helps boot, um, keep up your immune system. Uh, maybe try to try to avoid all the the, the 5G if you can. Um, some people can't. They they're you know in some some lo- localities they're installing these 5G lamps right outside their people's apartment in their homes, and you can't get away from it unfortunately. But um, there, um, Mike Emery has been promoting this uh, bubble tech. Um, and that apparently helps neutralize some of the, the negativity from the wife, um, the, ra- the radiation. Um, you can also visit my, my website, Neological Tech, and get yourself a meditation cube, and that'll also help raise your frequency at neologicaltech.com. A cool um, website, too. You could uh, uh, certainly, uh, I also think that you should uh, maybe deplug a little bit from. Um, the media, uh, I mean, mainstream media, of course, I think if you already listen to this podcast, you probably have already because a lot of it is just talking points that uh, the cabal wants and to actually find the best place to find the, the truth. I mean, you could probably come on, I would say, come on supersoldertalk.com, watch my videos. You can, uh, I've gotten, done at least two interviews. I've got another interview coming up tomorrow with um, Kusal. Mm-hmm. Again, it's going to be a, probably a lot. I'm confident it'll be another live stream. So that'll be tomorrow night, Friday, if um, if you want to um, tune into that. Yeah. Um, it would probably be sometime after 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Just, so just log on to YouTube and check, uh, look for updates for Super Soldier Talk. Yeah, it'll be about two hours or so. But yeah. anyway, uh, so I don't know. I, did, I, did that answer your question? I think you were yeah. asking me, what can we do to prepare ourselves? Um. So as far as news is concerned, yeah, just uh, um, I guess the, uh, I I personally like to go onto Reddit and look up um, into the conspiracy forum, and you can get to just go look at like more more popular posts. Uh, so that's at least one source of news. But um, Twitter, uh, the the Majestic Twelve account on Twitter, and uh, that's that's an excellent source as well. At least two good sources there, but uh, yeah, man, that's awesome. And I'm, I'm definitely recommend people check it and uh, listen to you on YouTube. And I, I appreciate you coming on. I know there's a lot going on. You have a lot going on, and I just thank you for coming on the podcast and like kind of enlightening us and telling us more about what a lot of folks don't know about. Thank you, James. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me. James coming through and bringing the heat. He is definitely not scared of being in the kitchen. He is uh, connected to a lot of folks that have a lot of insight into this. And to be honest, I've been pretty amazed at even the people I know with a lot of insight and some of the similarities and some, some of the there's differences, of course, but some of the similarities that uh, have been mentioned that there may be more of an operation here than we're aware It sounds conspiratorial, but then again, all a conspiracy is, is when two people know something and the rest don't. So, um, we're talking two people or more, and we know that the government is made of more than two people. So, uh, there's, there's always something, there's always something they know that we don't, how far down the rabbit hole that goes. I don't know, but it's good to hear different perspectives and opinions and make your own decisions. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Definitely check out his super soldier talk.com and his super soldier talk on YouTube, James rink, also known as James ring and give him some love. Check out his stuff. Also check out heroparanormal.com. Keep tuning in. And I appreciate you listening until next time. Keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground. But don't forget to take a look around. Come
Blast off in my time machine Third eye feeling like an e-visine Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off Come blast off in my time machine Third eye feeling like an e-visine Blast off, blast off, blast off